Hello, good evening. Okay, in this case, we are in the session number three. Maybe it could be like, or it could feel like it is the beginning of the week, but you know that um, we didn't have the session yesterday. And now we are going to continue with the process. So in this case, we are going to continue with the session number three. And you know that we are almost at the end of the sessions, uh, at the end of the module, because tomorrow is the last day of this module. So um, we are just going to have one more day and you are like free in this case, but we are uh, starting session number three. And tomorrow we are going to end the module so is almost almost at the end of this uh, this course so we are going to continue with the uh, topics that we have for this week because um you know that we have two days uh, done and now we are going to complete this number three and then we are going to complete the day number four tomorrow so uh, we were talking about past uh, on Monday and Tuesday. We were talking about uh, about past, and we were like learning about the tenses that we have on past, and we were seeing some uh, specifications, general information. We were uh, studying uh, some structures, some examples the uses and all of the things about the past. And now we are going to continue, but a little bit about the topic of the past, because we are going to learn about the idioms uh, that we can use when we are talking about past. And then we are going to begin with the topic of the future, because you know that in, in this week, it is supposed that, uh, we are going to talk about the past and future. So in this case, we are going to end the past with the idioms. And then we are going to see um, the information that we have about the future and how to express different things in future and the different structures that we have in future. So for this one, we're going to begin with the idioms. So let me share the screen. So here we have the topic that is idioms about past. And in this case, we are going to talk about idioms or past idioms and history idioms to talk about time gone by. So in this case, uh, we have a lot of idioms in English uh, for different situations, uh, for different action, for different activities. But in this case, we're just going to talk about past and history idioms or the idioms that we can use when we are talking about past actions or past uh, events. So we are going to see some uh, of them with the meaning because we are going to uh, have the meaning and also we are going to have an uh, example in which we are going to apply that idiom and you are going to see um, the idiom in the example. Good evening. So we are going to have three different things. The idiom, the, uh, the meaning, and number three, an example of the idiom. So we are going to begin with that part. So in this case, um, it says, do you love to reminisce about your memories? Or in this case, do you love to remember um, about your memories or to think about your memories from the past? 
I think we love to remember some things about the past. In this case, uh, the happy things, the happy situations, the happy events um, that we have lived in that moment. Or um, do you want to talk about historical times using some English history idioms? We know that in some cases when we are learning English, we need to talk about history and all other topics. So in that case, it is necessary that we have this kind of vocabulary that help us to uh, talk about different topics. So that's why we are talking about uh, idioms about past and also idioms that talk about a uh, history. So we are going to see some phrases and idioms uh, for talking about the past with an example uh, for each one. And these past idioms might be used to one, describe your experience, remember the past and share memories with others. Three, tell people to forget about the past. And four, talk about how things used to be a long time ago. In this case, what are the uses for these idioms? We have four different uses. And one of these is to talk about your experiences, about different activities, different um, things you have uh, yeah, experienced in the past. Then the second one is to remember the past and share memory with others when we are talking with um, other people about our lives and we are talking about the past, we can use the idioms. Number three, Tell people to forget about the past when we have um, bad situations or something that is not kind of happy. Uh, we tell people to um, forget about those events. So in this case, we are going to use the idiom to talk about that situation. And number four, to talk about how things used to be a long time ago and now are just like a memory in this case. So I'm going to write the uses of the idioms. So in this case, we have uses and we have four. Number one, describe your experiences. Number two, remember the past. And share memories. with others. Then we have to tell people to forget about the past. And number four, talk about how things used to be a long time ago. So we are going to write just a short a concept of the idioms to remember what idioms are because we are talking about idioms. And in this case, we are going to have information about the idiom song. We are going to remember what is like the meaning of the word idioms. And we are going to see um, something related to the uses and all of that things. So what is an idiom? In this case, it is a phrase. It is a phrase that does not have the literal meaning of the word within it. So it is important to become familiar with the definition of each one. So in this case, it is telling you that uh, they don't have literal uh, meaning uh, because in that case, when you translate the words one by one, it's going to make no sense because in that case, you're using different words to express an idea, a specific idea. But when you are familiar with these idioms, you know exactly what is the meaning of them and, and in which cases you are going to use.
So we're going to begin with some history idioms. Some of these can be used to talk about historic times, whereas others contain the word history, but actually have nothing to do with the past. In this case, we're talking about like a situation in the past or something historical. And in some cases, there are other uh, idioms that have the specific word or the word history, but they are not talking about the past. They are talking about something different. But in this case, we're going to see some idioms related to, to something historical. And we have number one. Let me have this, but I need to share. Yes, it's time. Times go by. Times gone by. This is the first idiom. They were together. So in this case, you need to word the, is the sentence like this. Not in separate ways, because in that case, it's going to um, miss the meaning or the, yes, the meaning that they, they want to express. So in this case, you need to write this one like this. So this one, this uh, idiom refers to an unspecified period of time in the past. You can use it when you don't know the exact dates of the period in question. And we have the example. The example say, in times gone by, people used to brush their teeth with sticks. So in this example, we have like in times go by, but don't, we don't know in which um, time it is they talking about. In this case, they are just uh, mentioned something that people uh, did in a long time ago. So it says in times go by, people used to brush their teeth with sticks. So in that case, they um, didn't have the brush uh, to do this kind of action. So it is a time in which we don't know uh, the exact time in which they uh, do something like this. So in that case, we have the first uh, idiom. And I'm going to mark them because uh, you need to know where they are. So we have number two. So in number two, we have the following idiom, a thing of the past, a thing of the past. This one means if something is a thing of the past, it doesn't happen or exist anymore. So in this case, we are talking about something, um, teeth. In this case, you have the singular tooth, but in plural is teeth without S. 
you you change the O for E, and in that case, it's it means that you are talking in plural, like with a toe and toes. But in that case, you are using um the S, but in foot, you change into plural and they are feet. So in that case, you are not going to use the S. So in this case, is when something is not um don't exist anymore. I mean in oh yes, I add the S at the end. But in this case, it's not related to the word. I was just writing and I forget to, to see that word. Thank you. So in this case, when we're talking about something done um exist in the past but it is no longer in that way so uh, maybe it now don't exist but at that time uh, that situation exists or is uh, or was a real so a thing of the past When you see um, that I'm making mistakes when I'm writing, please tell me because in some cases I I didn't notice the mistake because I, I am like um, very focused on the things that I am saying and I find the mistakes later and I, I said, wow, that is a big mistake. So, if you see that I am making mistakes with the examples or the things that I am writing, it's because I am like writing and talking and in some cases I am using the letters of the next word or something like that. Or I am thinking on the next thing I am I'm going to say. So in that case, I am like thinking and writing and it is like a big, a big deal then. And I am doing these kind of things in Spanish too. It is not just in English. I make this kind of mistake when I'm writing in Spanish too. Then we have the example. Dial up. Dial up. Moderns, modems are a thing of the past. Modems are a thing of the past. So in this case, we can talk about uh, things uh, that exist in the past, but now we are not longer using it. Like different kind of cell phones, um, uh, some kind of like uh, computers, um, some models of TVs, uh, some games in some, in this case, we can uh, talk about games also or even subjects, clothes, music, all of the things that exist in the past and they were like very famous at the time, but now it is just um, a memory. Then we have number three. But in this case, this one is not here, yes. Now I don't need this one, just this one. History in the making. History in the making. This one means that something which is happening now is notable enough that people in the future will remember it. So in these cases, when you are um, seeing some actions that are happening right now that you are you, you can think oh that is big enough that people will remember this action in the future because it is something really big and we are talking about um, about science uh, sports music movies 
books and all of the things that it's going to be kind of um has like uh or make people to to see to listen to to talk about that uh, that action that thing that object so in that case you say oh this thing is going to be a remember in the future so history in the making we are doing something that you think is going to be like very famous and in the future uh, also And we have the example. The Black Lives Matter movement is history in the making. What we're seeing now is history in the making. So the movements, the, the social movements, political movements, and this kind of things that ask for justice, they are a history in the making because in the future, we are going to remember that there were this kind of movements that talk about the rights of people and they were fighting for the, the things that they want. So this kind of actions are history in the making. Next one. Oh no, I need a star. Go down in history. Go down in history. This one means, or this one is similar to the idiom above to go down in history. Um, means to become a part of the history books. It has a border range of uses in it since it can refer to a person, an organization, an object, or really anything at all. So go down in history is to make something big that you can like become part of the history books and you are going to be remembered for this thing that you are doing. So in this case, it's related to people, related to organizations, related to an object or anything um, that makes something really, really big.
and we have the example. And this example say, Dini records have gone down in history as one of the most important technological developments for the music industry. Then we have number two, Greta Thunberg will go down in history as one of the most influential people of the 21st century. And number three, this day will certainly go down in history. So in this case, we um, can see that we are talking about um, a thing, a people, and a special date. So in that case, we can refer to anything that is making something uh, remarkable. And in this case, I'm going to divide the three examples. Now we're going to see the next one. And now we are going to talk about bringing up the past. And uh, this is for um, nostalgia or something like that, like sadness or something uh, that we feel when we remember the past. And in this case, we have the first one that is in the good old days, in the good, all days this one is talking about a, or refers to a time in the past when you remember life being better in some ways in this case is when we are maybe um thinking about when we were uh, children and we uh, think that in that case it can easier or it was easier for us to live our lives and to do all the things that we like, because in, the, in those cases, um, we have more time to play some games, uh, to talk with some uh, special people and all other things. So in that case is when we are remembering something about the past um, or about your life. Then we're going to see the example. In the good old days, children didn't have smartphones and video games. 
They played outside together. Next one, take a trip down memory lane. Take a trip down memory lane. To take a trip down memory lane is to spend time Reminiscing about the past, especially about the happy memories. In this case is to think about uh, the happy memories that we have about the past. And we have the example. And this one said, my grandmother loves to take a trip down memory lane and tell me about her childhood. We're going to see a couple of more, um, I mean, we're going to see like five or, yes, like five more um, idioms and then we're going to change the topic and we're going to talk about the future. Then we have a blast from the past. This one means um, it's someone or something that reminds you of an entire time of your life, giving you a sense of nostalgia. In this case is when we find um, maybe an old friend, a, a classmate or a neighbor that uh, we didn't see for a long time. And we have like this kind of good relationship with them. And uh, after a long time, we see again that person and we remember uh, good things about the past or the place in which we tend to live. So in that case is to, uh, to bring to the memory something that maybe you don't forget, but you are not like, remembering all the time you you keep it like a uh, saving a space in your memory but when you see this kind of people you remember all the things that you live
And we have an example. And this one said, I, I bumped into one of my old school friends today. What a blast from the past. So in that case, this person um, see a classmate and remember the old days when they were like students and the things that they did when they were in the school. Next one. Long time no see. This is one very common. Long time no see. I think that you have heard about this idiom before. Long time no see simply means that it has been a long time since you last saw someone. So in this case is when you have like um, a friend that is living in another place and in this moment you see that person or you have a meeting with that person and you say long time no see. So in that case you're referring to um, it's been a long time uh, since you last saw that person. And we have the example. In the examples, it said, Hi, John, a long time no see. How are you doing these days? Hi, John, long time no see. How are you doing these days? Almost done, almost done. Next one. Once upon a time. This one is very common also. Once upon a time. You might have heard the phrase once upon a time used at the opening a line of a fairy tale. So in this case, when we're reading fairy tales or watching a movie that is uh, about fairy tales, in which we can hear this phrase. And in everyday speech, it is used to talk about a time long ago, uh, usually by way of reminiscence. So in this case, is when we're talking about a very, very long time ago. We have the example. Once upon a time, it was safe to walk around this town at night.
just two more and we end this part. Turn, uh, this one is turn back the hands of time. Turn back the hands of time. This one means, in this case is turn back the hands of time. Also we can say just turn back time. And this means to go back to the past in order to do things differently. So in this case is um, the feeling to uh, going back in time to change some things. We have the example. And this one said, I wish I could turn back the hands of time and study harder for the exams I fail. And the last one. Put the clock back. Put the clock back. This one uh, with a similar meaning to the idiom above, to put the clock back means to go back in time and change the course of events. Again, this is used to express wishful thinking. This is just a wish in which we can think about and um, go back in time and change the things and change the, the actions that happen in a specific time. But in this case, you know that it is almost impossible to do something like that. But if we think about um, something fantastical or if you believe in in time travelers, it is possible, but you know, it is a very complicated topic. Okay, in the last example, if only I could put the clock back and change what I say to her. So in this case, we have a short list. In this case, it's a very, very short list of uh, idioms because I have more here. And if you uh, search um, idioms on the internet, you are going to find a lot of idioms because um, people, uh, well, in this case, native speakers likes to use a lot of idioms to refer to different things. Like in Spanish, we use this kind of idioms to uh, re, um, to talk about different experience and different things. So that is not something very uh, different from the English and the Spanish language. And now we're going to continue 
uh, for a couple of minutes because we have uh, like a couple of minutes, like 13 or something like that. We are going to begin with the next topic that in this case is future. So we are going to talk about future and the uh, things that we have about future. We're going to do it like uh, we did with the topic of the past in which we have like um, the examples, the structure, the uses and the information that we need to know about the future. So we're going to begin with that part. We're going to know uh, some information about the, the future and then we're going to see the structure. So. There are a number of different ways of referring to the future in English. It is important to remember that we are expressing more than simply the time of the action or event. It obviously, any future tense will always refer to a time later than now, but it may also express our, our attitude to the future event. In this case, when we are talking about future, we are just not talking about the expression of time or um, just the tense. We are talking about also our attitude uh, towards the future and the actions that are going to happen in that time. So in this case, we have like um, different ideas that can be expressed using different tenses. And we have a simple prediction, arrangements, plan and intentions, timetable events, prediction based on present evidence, willingness, an action in progress in the future, an action or event that is matter of routine, an obligation, an action or event that will, will take place immediately or very soon, uh, projecting ourselves into the future and looking back at a complete action. We know that in future we have, we're going to, and we're talking about action that are going to happen in the future. Um, we know that we are talking about something that it's going to happen or we think is going to happen, but also we have a lot of ideas about the future and we can use different tenses, not just the future, to express um, this kind of ideas, because in, in future, we also have a present a structure in which we can use it to, to express things in the future. Imagine we are using present to talk about the future, but uh, that's why we need to learn more about the language that we are um, trying to acquire at this point. So. We have all of the following ideas can be expressed using different tenses. And we have the list of ideas. Simple prediction. Arrangements, plans and intentions, timetable, events, prediction based on present evidence. Willingness, an action in progress, in the future, an action or event that is matter of routine,
obligation, an action or event that will take place immediately or very soon. And the last one, projecting ourselves. Into the future. And looking. At a complete. Action. So in this case, we are like trying to say that um, this kind of ideas are not like uh, exclusive of the future because you can use um, different tenses uh, to express this kind of things. You know that we are talking about future, but uh, we can also use different tenses to express those ideas. And it, it's going to be in future, not in past, nor in present. But you can use the different tenses to express those ideas. So in this case, I'm going to write a, a statement that corresponds to the ideas that we have in this list. So in this case, I'm going to write the uh, sentence that is related to the different points or different ideas that we have in this list. For example, I'm going to write here examples. For the number one, we have a simple prediction. And I have the following sentence. There will be a snow in many areas tomorrow. There will be snow in many areas tomorrow. So in this case, we are talking about a simple prediction because in that case, in, in that context, uh, maybe they are living in a city in which um, they have this kind of uh, activity, the snow uh, falling and all of that thing. So in that case, we are using will, that is very, very simple prediction. There will be snow in many areas tomorrow. Number two, for arrangements, I am meeting And in this case, you can notice that we are using gerund, but also we are using present. So in this case, it's present continuous to express something in the future. I am meeting Jim at the airport. And why are we like using present continuous to talk about future? Because in this case, we are talking about that we are going to do something in a very short a period of time, but in this case, it's not happening. It's going to happen in like two hours, in an hour, in a couple of minutes, but we are talking about a very, very um, short period of time on the future. Number three, plans and intentions. We are going to spend the summer abroad. We are going to spend the summer and in this case we are talking about a plan remember that when we are using going to it's when you make uh, make plans and you have everything that you need to complete that action and it is not just a dream it is something that you are going to do for real so in this case we're going to spend the summer abroad that is an action that is going to take place because you have plans to do it. Next one, timetable events. The plane takes off at 3 a.m. The plane takes off at 
three am. So this is something that you maybe are not planning, but they are like um, specified. In this case, you have like a flight and you know that the plane takes off at 3 a.m. So in that case, you can change that situation. Then prediction based on present evidence. I think it's going to rain. I think it is going to rain. So you need to have some signals to use these expressions because um, when you are talking or using will, uh, you don't have evidence. And in this case, you're using going to, and you have evidence to support your idea. Maybe you see dark clouds, um, you hear some sounds on the sky and you know that it's going to rain because you have evidence in that moment that is going to um, happen that action. Then willingness. We uh, will give you a lift to the cinema. We will give you a lift to the cinema. So I want to do it. I have the time to do it. That is a, why we are talking about willingness. Then the next one, an action in progress in the future. This time next week, I will be sunbathing. This time next week, I will sun bath. Maybe it's going to happen, but we are not sure. An action or event that is a matter of routine. So we're talking about routines. You will be seeing John in the office tomorrow, won't you? Won't you? Because maybe you work with that person and you see uh, every day. So, uh, um, oh wow, what am I doing? So we are going to end the session now because it's time. And we are going to continue with the examples and the last part of the topic tomorrow. And we're going to have the last session tomorrow. So have a really good night and see you tomorrow in the last session. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.